If there's a feeling of wearing out, then what is wearing, wearing out? Is it a stable identity that is worn out, outside? Is it the always changing identity that is a wearing out of stability, tired of performing, tired of appearing for the appearance? Is it being worn out? Is it tired? What is it tired of? Performing? Because even when we're not performing, we are performing in this global system that we find ourselves inhabiting, wearing and reproducing, performing in that way that we attend only to the visual and not so much to the felt, the remembered, the heard, the tasted. Smell offers us to the worn itself, to what is worn out as that which is worn out, seeped and rubbed out. I'm worn out from being out, from wearing a certain being and from being worn by all the beings from being as teacher, societal role in the system. Energy has been sapped, in a good way, I believe, for the tradition of passing things on, of passing it on. Is it a history of wearing that is passed on, of my having been worn out and having been worn? What is it to wear and tear, to tear open, to wear openly, to wear each other out and to wear for each other out, outside. Where wind and sun and nighttime and classroom are exposing of those unnoticed parts of us, those backsides brought front ways, the writing that's written on the other side of the page, but on a page that has nowhere between it to turn, the flip side of the moon, What do you wear when you're worn out? That is, what do you eat? What nourishes you? Right now I'm craving the energy of a pumpkin soup with buttery bread. I'll wear it out.
Worn thin. What is worn thin? What is so thinly worn between us, like a membrane that when sticking fingers in, it can be permeated, decorated, broken? If I break through, what can you or I touch and feel? What can we sense, smell, share? Not avail because I can see between us, between them. What is worn so thinly that when it sits upon the body, it is like a skin? What is worn so thinly that when it stretches across the body, it snaps? Is there pain from that elastic snap? Where is the pain worn on the body? Can it be bled out, caught in a cup worn by the body, worn in the body, or just running over the body like adornment? What is worn outside us? What is worn inside out? What is worn inside us? What is worn away that then requires changes, repairs, and augmentations, valves, pumps, lenses, titanium, steel, mesh, printed organs and tissue. Did you know that you can grow a windpipe in a lab and then it can be worn? What is worn and then dissolves? Stitches, scabs, and some scars. What is worn away and also remains? What wears away at you, at us? Skin, fingerprints, the surface of a ring.
What does wearing something do? To wear is to perform, to present one's life. To wear is to create, to create purpose. To wear is to connect, to feel people and places. What does wearing something do? To wear and tear, to move and work. To wear is to make something new, to produce something new. To wear is to hope, to hope for something new. What does wearing something do? To wear something of armour, to wear something collectively. To wear is to create something of value, to wear something meaningful. To wear is to wear something, to be something.
Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. It's very lovely to see all your faces here. <laughs> um, if you have a question, we would love to hear it. Yeah. Feel free to jump on in. Hi. Hello, thank you for the lovely performance. I, had, I have one technical question and one kind of production question. How did you get the microphone so that you can hear the heartbeat, uh, the, the piece on the pedestal? That's totally Tim and <laughs> Eric. Is it just a specific kind of microphone? It's, yeah. yeah. It's just a regular um, uh, microphone and we just took the, uh, the um, wind cover off it and turned it up very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to try yeah. that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I, I yeah. wondered if you could say more about the alarm sound that was heard throughout the piece and um, where you chose to place it and why that particular noise, and yes. Just on the heartbeat still, um, they turn it up really loud, so when it's on the heart, they turn it on so that it doesn't do a huge feedback thing because if it moves around, then it scrapes and it turns up really loud, so hurt your ears, just as a, yeah. <laughs> That's the only technical part, as an, an experience we had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But do you want to say, or do you, would you like me to answer the second part? I don't Should mind. we both contribute? Yeah. Um, I guess we had a variety of acts that we developed. We called them acts as a way to describe the activity that we're undertaking. Um, and we, we then kind of reduced that to a three. So um, we wanted <laughs> a variety of like sensations or intensities across movement and sound and chime was a way for us to structure that, those acts so we know that it's coming to an end and we move on to our next piece. Hmm. And we just chose the one <laughs> that we liked the most. It's, it's the alarm my phone wakes me up with, I think. Yeah, which we also like. Maybe, or maybe it's the one, or it's on Eric's yeah, phone. Yeah, it is. So, yeah. Bulletin. It's on everyone's, like, brand, branded phone. Yeah. Sorry, I just realised we had this um, oh, little yeah. bowl full of um, little copper sh uh, tape. So feel free to take some if you want to put it on your nails like we have. Very stylish, or on your clothes. <laughs> Would you like some okay? Yes, please. You don't have to. Yeah. I think they're really little like glitter, so don't inhale. <laughs> you want to pass? <laughs> Feel free. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Can you. Um, Tell us, can you talk us through um, your aspirations or your motivation for working in this way today? And I'm, I'm interested, there's a, it feels like there's a number of relations or spatial um, attributes you're bringing forward here. And I'm just curious if you can, um, I mean, we had the, the kind of voiceover talking us through where where. Um, I, I'm just curious to hear more from the kind of personal um, aspect, I suppose. Yeah, sure. I, I sorry for that. that. Yeah, no. No, it's I, good. I feel like I um, like feel the same maybe aspiration of, I don't know if you feel the same way, but just getting an invitation from Meredith to join in and in this discussion. Um, so I feel a bit like the same as getting an invite to the event itself um, <laughs> and just uh, as a curiosity and like an exploration. That's just me personally. I think I don't feel a kind of a, a sense of like a linear research line to things in, in this respect. But um, yeah, I'd be 
curious to hear your thoughts <laughs> as well, like on our motivation. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> as a, we did yeah. write quite a lot to begin with together, Ben and I, and then out of that document inspired the three poems or texts that you hear with each act, and Kay contributed to that as well. But one of the things that kind of structured our thinking around what we were doing was thinking about what are intrinsic and extrinsic qualities of jewellery and um, not how we can explore them spatially, expansively, through light, through sound, through sensation. Um, so I guess it had a f kind of philosophical intent in some ways. Yeah. Um, and I guess to expand on that, maybe thinking about, you know, we often think about the perception of jewellery and the visual aspect of it and what you come to know by looking and we wanted to think about how you come to know jewellery through sensation more broadly, yeah. I was also wondering when you were going through the space, and in particular in the beginning, it was almost as if you were in a dialogue with Lisa's work to some degree. Um, and there was a kind of ritualistic aspect to the performance as well. Was that intentional or it's something that more sort of happened? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Maybe. It Maybe. happened in rehearsal, mm. yeah, in the space when Meredith and I were rehearsing. Um, we did two rehearsals in the space. Oh, did we? Yeah. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know, I think it's very, uh, definitely for me not a dialogue in language, um, but just uh, a kind of looking at the show and another way of looking at the show, maybe. And I spent more time with the works than I did when I walked through the show because I had a kind of my own agenda, which I thought was curious. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I was thinking about sounding or resonating with objects that were present in the space mm. in kind of an intuitive way, but also that, that act of like deep, or that kind of like taking your time to look at something. Hmm. That this, this question about wearing is obviously the one thing that is very much missing in a show like this where, you know, the objects are static. So it felt like it complemented the exhibition Thank very you. much. Any surprises? I think I was surprised about Kay's text so beautifully, like rounding it all up for me. <laughs> In a way, I thought I thought because I don't want to speak on behalf of Ben, but I, when I wrote my poem, I thought about asking questions and and experience, and then and we weren't necessarily wanting to make a statement about what jewellery is. So I thought to open it to wearing, and Kate's text does that in a really lovely way, um, says a lot of the things that we, I guess, wanted to say or ask, answers a lot of our questions. <laughs> Thanks, mm, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I felt like uh, the question that we had was something I wanted to ask Kate <laughs> in a way as well. Like a number of practitioners, but most especially you as a practitioner working for a long time really investigating like garments and garment making and labor and wearing and, and in text, a way intensity and language yeah yeah so yeah so, yeah no it was um i recorded it at home but to hear my voice in a space like this was um yeah it was surprising but um, no, thank you for 
inviting me to contribute a poem in response to your poems and um, some photographic documentation that you sent me, which I responded to, but also um, spoke a bit about, you know, what, um, what does wearing something do for me inside my own practice? Um, but, yeah, it was great to see you guys perform. Um, and I wanted, it, I wanted it to go for longer. Like, I was sort of consumed in it. Um, really? Yeah, it was great. Like, <laughs> like, as, uh, like I when think you, visually, yeah. spatially, and yeah. um, just with all the materials um, that, yeah, you picked up and sort of played with in the space. Thank you. So yeah. you still had the same thinking about jewellery? Did your dialogue with jewellery shift in any way? I don't know. I feel like I've always had an appreciation for jewellery that isn't, strictly speaking, um, conventional. Yeah. And the kind of spatial and sensory possibilities of that type of jewellery, yeah. And I appreciate a lot of practitioners who have a sculptural practice or spatial practice that make wearable work um, engage from a different perspective. So, yeah, I think maybe it hasn't changed all that much, but it, the whole thing was surprising in a way because I haven't necessarily performed. Ben has a lot more experience and Kay... Um, so that was all a super pleasant surprise <laughs> and nerve-wracking and interesting surprise. I'm not sure what, I, what thoughts I had of jewellery before. <laughs> Sorry, it's like a um, very... Uh, atmospheric answer <laughs> in a way <laughs> just to like defer it again <laughs> would be nice but like the physical sort of side of it I think and emotional physical sort of side of it the movement of it and the relationships that it sort of uh, marks in a way as well I find fascinating especially between practitioners like like makers I think that's yeah um Thanks for this. Um, I had a question specifically about, I guess, electricity or the conductive quality of a lot of the materials that you were using, because I feel like that's something quite specific that's kind of going on here in terms of the power differential or power transference, or you know, you're talking about this sensorium and wearing and kind of wearing out these implicated systems of jewelry and electronics, you know, preciousness, gold conductivity. Um, yeah, I just wondered what some of your thoughts were around that specifically. Do you want me to start? Do you want I don't to mind, start? I'd really like to hear Debris talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us what you think. Um, well, I think it started for me quite simply when we thought about illuminating the body. And um, one of the things, the first things we made, um, and this was Ben's idea was to make something that illuminated the interior space of the ear and that was quite a kind of pivotal point for us because it sort of that was one of the intrinsic I guess relationships that we developed and then things kind of developed outward from that point um, yeah so that was a kind of a nice starting point and I like that intersection it has with kind of like design or industrial design or you know that sort of thing, particularly in this context where we are in this institution. Yeah. It's interesting, the power... Um, what phrase did you use to bring it? Con yeah, con yeah. yeah. I think I'm really interested in that in terms of improvising as well, like in, in the 
process of performing. We had the set list, but it sort of breaks out and like almost like as a battery has like a discharge of, and like <laughs> um, we improvising new sort of connections come up and I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and I was sort of thinking about that in relationship to the intensity of making and we talked a lot about, or we talked a bit about excess and the, the kind of notion that what we're creating might be excessive because of the layers and the kind of multiplicity of the things that we were engaging with. But I like the sense that maybe it replicates, the light somehow replicates that notion of, or mirrors that notion of excess in that it's like an output you but you also need an input to make that output. And we talked a lot about energy, I guess, that requ is required for a sustainable practice or just for a practice, full stop, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious that Kay, like there was that kind of desire for more because the mm -hmm. whole time we had that conversation of almost like trying to pay it back, like, or like kind of sort of combat this uh, excessive sort of process that we had to get Meredith and I had together in that way. We were just like, oh, we could do this and this and this and add this and this. And, um, but it, um, yeah, if it didn't have that sense, then that's probably, mm. yeah, we could really unleash the next time we do a performance yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Another question. Could you say more about the inscription on your clothing? Um, yeah. Why are they included in the piece? What do they say? And at some point, it looks like it's inscribed from the inside. Or that just may be from the distance. It might be our trial and error <laughs> <laughs> process. Mm. Um, ben had done some embroidery before. And when we started working together, it gave me a bookmark that says, after the cat slept, it got up? Yeah, I think it's an Issa poem. Right. But the Issa poem, well, that's a, I just realised I sort of censored that bookmark because the Issa <laughs> poem is the cat's, after the cat sleep, sle sleeps, it goes outside and has sex. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, you totally said What a weird sensitive. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe it got up before having sex in life, but yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, and so we did the sewing together on Ben's mum's sewing oh, machine. Yeah, it has like typing ability. Yes, and they're all words that are derived from the text that we wrote together initially. We were kind of writing on using the sewing machine. Like it was very early on in the process, so we were sort of brainstorming onto the clothes that we would wear for the performance. So it says what, just wearing something undo on here? Yep, casting the lights, cast off the stylistic. Listen and look closely, grippy and grabby. <laughs> yeah, we've got grippy and grabby here. I don't know what else I've got. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. Mm. It was just sort of trying to bring on a, process, a creative process <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Me. Can you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> we could sew on your clothes. Yeah. Maybe that would be nice. Yeah. Does, uh, does anyone have any like comments or like you know things that you're thinking about that you'd like to share that uh, don't necessarily relate to this performance? I don't know things that have come up in your visits to the workshops. So I feel like this wasn't, we sort of took the workshop and turned it into a performance. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. We thought about that 
a lot. We we were going to make more noise with our jewelry and stuff, but yeah. But while we were making, we thought about the sound. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to add anything, Kay? Yeah. I was just thinking about the text on your clothing and how it becomes sort of an add-on thing. And when someone, uh, you asked if it was, um, if you could buy it, if you could consume it. Um, I liked how you said that we can add text to your clothing. And then I sort of got visuals of you sort of getting everyone's clothing and <laughs> sort of typing or putting the text onto existing clothing that is already worn by people and worn constantly and sort of continuously. Mm. There's, there yeah. is a connection to jewellery there, isn't mm. there, as well? Like, you know, adding to something. Yeah. There's um, been something about this performance that has distilled so much of what's happened across the weeks so far, I think, in that we've been circulating around some key themes each week about materials, but also the immaterial, but also performance. What's been interesting for Nella and I, thinking about this show in particular, we always come back to the squirrel on the skateboard, is that the only thing in some ways that makes that squirrel on a skateboard a piece of jewellery is the, is the chain. Otherwise, it's a sculpture, or it's just a squirrel on a skateboard. But that chain lets me wear it to the supermarket. It lets me wear it to a party. It gets it out of the gallery, and it begins a conversation. It begins the performance that is jewellery. So I think what's in that distilling of so much of the whole show, all the jewellery in today's activity, has been showing the activity of jewellery. That if it is just the chain, that makes that jewellery, is there anything else that defines jewellery? And I think what I got out of today is that, yes, it's about its materials, it's about that wearability, but as Tim said too, it's about the performance aspect of it. It's that bit that gets me talking to you, that makes me into a sounding object, a communication object through the relationship with this thing I put on my body. And so maybe... In a way, this is the most fundamental question. What does wearing something do? Yeah. It makes, it puts me in relation. Yeah, it always set in relation. And it's always different. Yeah, yeah I feel like it, it's also not necessarily a relation that has to bind you, you know, in a, relate, in a certain way of relating. Like, you know, often it's like that thing of like, also like almost discovering something from someone else that like then you is generative for you, not necessarily, you know, confusing you with that person or, you know, like that kind of um yeah, I don't know, I, I like that. You know, the connection isn't necessarily a kind of yeah, bind or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like Meredith and I have different coloured ear lights <laughs> today. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, all of you, for coming. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. And mm -hmm.